So somebody wanted to know about some of the unusual features of the Horner syndrome. So the typical features of the Horners, the ones that everyone knows, is ptosis, meiosis, smaller pupil, and anhydrosis. Now, of course, in the air conditioning era, we don't really have patients complaining about the anhydrosis. But the things you need to know are the about the atypical features are the things that get ophthalmologists into trouble. Because everyone knows this, little bit of ptosis, little bit of meiosis, anhydrosis of the face. So these are the common features, the one you should look over every single time. But the ones that get us in trouble are when they have these atypical features. And one of the atypical features is the eye can be red. And the reason the eye can be red is you have a balance between your tone in the sympathetics and the parasympathetics. And so if you have sympathetic instability, you might get vasodilation or vasoconstriction, and this will make the eye look red. And then you'll think it's a red eye problem. And you might blame the ptosis on edema. You might not notice the meiosis because the anisocoria is greater than the dark. So do not be fooled by the transient red eye that might occur in an acute Horner syndrome. In addition, that same balance is affecting the accommodation. So there's tone in the ciliary body. And so if you have an imbalance in the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic tone, you might get too much or too little accommodation. And so the person might complain about blurry vision at near. The other thing that might affect their near vision is the size of the pupil. So if the pupil is smaller, that's gonna change the amount of light that's coming in in the right eye versus the left eye. And that might change the power of their lens or their refraction because the, there's like a little pinhole now in the one eye. So they might complain about their near vision, either from the depth of field change from the meiotic pupil, the pinhole effect from the meiotic pupil, or the change in the balance and the accommodation. And the transient red eye can occur and mimic a conjunctivitis in an acute Horner syndrome. The last one that's atypical is the upside down ptosis. So this produces a appearance of enophthalmus. So it'll look like this eye is smaller, but it's not real enophthalmus. It's an apparent enophthalmus caused by the little bit of ptosis and the little bit of upside down ptosis. The upper lid ptosis is caused by the sympathetically innervated Mueller's muscle, and that means it can only be one or two millimeters of ptosis. It cannot be a complete ptosis. And there's an equivalent muscle which has no name in the lower lid, and so when the lower lid retractor is weak, the lid goes up. And there are many, many, many causes of ptosis that are benign, but there's only one neurogenic cause of upside down ptosis, the Horner syndrome. So the upside down ptosis is something you really need to look for because you're going against the gravitational field of this planet if you have upside down ptosis. There are plenty of reasons for the lid to sag in normal people, levator dehiscence, age-related changes, dermatochalasis, but there's only one neurogenic cause for the lid to go against the gravitational field of this planet. That is upside down ptosis. And that is a key and differentiating feature that is not present in the benign forms of ptosis. So you need to be aware of the usual ways that Horner syndrome comes to us, but also the unusual ways. Transient red eye, transient changes in their accommodation, and the upside down ptosis.